Hello everyone, I am Masu Delpe. I am talking in behalf of the MDP Foundation and Be Life, uh, my organization that supports not only our local communities in Houston and in Texas, but global clients who are not just suffering from diseases, but also life aff afflictions like poverty and laziness and other kinds of internal problems. Today commemorates the 65 years anniversary of the WHO, World Health uh, Organization. And it is April 7, in 1948, that WHO was established. So I'd like to congratulate WHO and its team uh, worldwide for doing a great job in fighting uh, diseases and other human afflictions. Now the theme of uh, today, April 7, uh, lecture in conjunction with the WHO day will be a high blood pressure and cardiovascular diseases. And uh, the theme of WHO really to, uh, to uh, commemorate this, uh, this uh, day is to reduce heart stroke and heart attacks in humanity and also to uh, bring greater awareness to humanity, improve the detection of uh, cardiovascular diseases and also to enable the ecosystem and the environment to support these processes. So we will collaborate with the WHO in this process, but we will be talking largely in the level of energy medicine and healing science as a support to this uh, goal of WHO. Now, do you know that one out of three adults have uh, hypertension? Now, that's a lot. If you are 10 people, at least three people would have hypertension. And that's alarming to me because, uh, you know, uh, there are people who are endangering today their lives and their health because they have high blood pressure. And high blood pressure, when it is not regulated, can lead to stroke or aneurysms, which can paralyze people and re render them use, uh, not as useful as before. Cardiovascular diseases, the CVD, are the number one cause of death globally. According to WHO statistics, 18 million people die of CVD or cardiovascular disease uh, every year. And that is 30% of all global deaths caused by diseases. 18 million people die every year. That's a lot of people who die of uh, cardiovascular diseases. 30% of uh, the whole global deaths are caused by CVDs. So it's alarming. And usually low, uh, low income uh, countries, the third world countries, are subjected to this, uh, uh, to this predicament. And 80% of these deaths are from these low income families. So WHO has to focus more on people who are underserved. And so our nonprofit uh, organization MDP Foundation focuses on the underserved and underprivileged groups around the world to serve them not only to feed them with physical food but to feed them with consciousness, we educate them with new tools and life skills so that they can fight diseases rather than paying more expensive uh, pills and medical intervention like heart surgery or for paralysis uh, issues and rehabilitation, which are expensive. We'd rather have them uh, tools to prevent CVDs. Now, hypertension or high blood increases the risk of heart attacks, stroke, and even kidney failure. So when they are not regulated and not controlled, they're endangering a person to be incapacitated for life sometimes, especially with a stroke and paralysis. Now, the energy medicine component of my lecture today focuses on things they do not talk much at the scientific level or even at the professional medical levels. So I can bring my expertise as a, as a world expert in energy medicine and healing science to all of you who are listening today, to your loved ones who might have potential stroke and heart attack because they have CVDs already, or even our children and our future youth who can be educated with the right skills and the right behaviors to be able to fight and prevent this disease. 
or these diseases of CVD. Now, first of all, I'd like to talk about the energetic components of uh, diseases. Before a person gets sick, there is already an energetic disease energy, either in the heart, in the throat, in the eyes, or even in the back, in this L4, L5 areas, where the energy that controls blood pressure is located. So we do a lot of uh, maintenance and or preventive techniques to balance this energy field of a human being, the invisible energy field, which is called the human aura. And there are centers of energy called the chakras that controls the different glands inside our bodies. It can also control your blood pressure. It can uh, control your brain, your nervous system. All of these energy centers called the chakras or centers of energy are very crucial in regulating blood pressure, heartbeat, including prevention of uh, heart attacks and stroke and hypertension. So by evaluating the patterns of diseases like hypertension or high blood, heart conditions, and even the potential uh, victims of stroke, we are able to prevent the occurrence of these uh, uh, predicaments and afflictions before they hammer or that before they affect the human being. So it is a very good tool to be used not only to correct people who are already paralyzed, already have uh, heart conditions, but to prevent them from not having them, especially if they have genetic uh, potential to have these diseases. So this energy field around a person called the human aura and the centers of energy that are protruding like trumpets of light in front of your body and at the back and even in your palms and elbows, armpits. And these centers of energy are our concern in energy medicine. Plus, cleaning and balancing the human aura so that they do not get clogged or they do not get stale or they do not get congested in certain parts of the body that can cause hypertension, heart disease, or even paralysis. So this human energy field called the human aura or bioplasmic energy body is much easy to regulate and balance if you know their energy anatomy and you know what energy controls what organ. For example, many heart conditions are not just caused by a high cholesterol diet, oily diet, or only uh, because of genetics. Even people with no genetic predisposition can have heart conditions and hypertension if they violate certain energetic principles. For example, if you smoke, if you drink heavily, plus you are highly stressed, plus you do not sleep well, plus you have a divorce, or if you have a high stress uh, cause of conflict, you will be susceptible easily to heart condition, blood pressure, or other side effects. But if you smoke, or when you smoke and you still exercise and you eat well and you are not that stressed, most likely you have a better survival uh, instincts and uh, factors than somebody who doesn't have a genetic predisposition for heart disease, blood, but is highly stressed, smoke, drink, and do not observe a good diet. So it depends on what combinations are mixed to make things worse or what makes uh, things uh, predispose you to different conditions like heart disease. For example, many emotional people are easier to have maybe heart conditions and diabetes than people who are more mental in the sense that when you are emotional and you get easily frustrated and you are very intolerant to things, you have a very stre a low stress and fatigue tolerance and we have a emotional problems. When you have a fight, you easily get hurt than a person who is more mental and more powerful. So there is a factor that is brought by the balance of your trinity. In you are, is the likeness and image of God or the creator because we copied the trinity qualities of God or the divine uh, being. We have the capacity to be powerful, vitality, we have love and emotions and feelings and we have the mind and thoughts. So if you see who what makes you similar to God, is, are, these are the three components. 
power, including vitality, your love and emotions and feelings, and your mind and your thought patterns. Now, a lot of people who are very emotional tend to get stressed easier. As you increase your emotional sensitivity, you can also empathize to many people's problems. Without suffering yourself, you can suffer emotionally by empathizing with people with uh, problems around you, especially related to you like family members. Whereas mental people have uh, the ability to compartmentalize. They suffer through emotional upheavals in the house, but when they go to work, they can compartmentalize and leave their problems behind the house, and they work efficiently in the office. And sometimes they can isolate their problems in the office and not bring it home. Like politician with a little bit stronger uh, will and mental stamina, uh, they can be humiliated in public through a debate. They can be, you know, exposed with corruptions and negative things. But if their will is strong and their hearts are less developed, they tend to be thicker. They tend to, be, to not mind the humiliation as much as an emotional person, which is lower in tra terms of stress and humiliation tolerance. So there is a role of our makeup as inborn qualities, but we can change them. That's the good news. So the powerful person would be more subjective also to anger. And if they have a genetics of heart disease, that angry person and with stress might also get a stroke, especially if they have been hypertensive for many years. They are fragile and they are highly stressed and they are very strong in terms of temperaments. They tend to get flayed up easily. They get irritable. So these types of people tend to be subjected also to stroke. Now a more mental person like the Einsteins, the scientists, might have less emotional stimulation so their tolerance level against stress, against people's whatabouts and their sufferings in the house might not affect them as a Mother Teresa a type of human being. Therefore, probably their, their heart disease is either through genetics or their wrong food, or they do not have much exercise and not, not much oxygen and circulation. So therefore, even they don't have a lot of emotional upheavals, as an emotional person, they might have wrong food, they do not exercise, they do not much move, and they can be always in front of the computer and always thinking, but forgetting their health through diets and other uh, measures. So if you look at the different components of our nature, uh, the power in you can make you have a stroke if you are very impatient, if you are always pushing with speed all your goals and you compress your time frame to produce results, so it burns your burnout or high stress or fatigue. Whereas the intelligent person might be busy looking through the telescope or through the microscope and they forgot to move and they, they forgot to eat well and they don't rest well because they're always thinking. That can subject a person also to factors that exacerbate uh, heart conditions or hypertension. Or they might be subjected to the genetics in their line of families. Whereas an emotional person who do not also exercise uh, will be emotional in nature, em empathic to the problems of people around them, yet they do not exercise, so they might have a uh, diabetes conditions because of sedentary nature. And then that would lead to kidney failure, eye failure, or heart failure. So there are many exacerbating factors and conditions that might lead people to have heart disease and hypertension. So it's not a straightforward answer. But definitely what I've found out in my global research through healing people, through consulting and profiling diseases through my clients are as follows. Of course, poor diet, uh, high oil, high fat, and uh, imbalanced diet will lead to high cholesterol and other factors that clogs the arteries, which brings uh, hypertension and heart disease. Secondly is also the lack of rests and lack of sleep that might lead people to be more uh, impatient, angry, irritable, and causing people to always put this feeling of hot and red energy 
into their emotional centers in here. When you are very angry and stressed all the time, you feel burning sensations in your stomach area, your solar plexus, and also it's like feeling the burning sensation on your heart. And these energies that are more red and orangey when it's produced by stress and anger tends to cook the heart to make them weaker until the muscles uh, of the heart loses resilient and uh, therefore it causes many things or in a, an inflamed heart or enlarged heart. Or a lot of people who are eating well but always stressed and always angry tend to produce this irritable energy in their solar plexus which is a center of energy here which is called the solar plexus center, emotional center, will create them uh, in digestion or poor uh, nutrition, not because they do not eat well. The conversion of food that we eat are done by the energy in the solar plexus. And if this is always red with stress and anger, it does not support the digestive processes of the stomach and the absorption of food in the small intestines because when a person is eating, <coughs> The energy here turns into green, and green energy helps break down the nutrition inside your alimentary canal. When people are stressed, angry, resentful, and bitter, the energy here is not converting into green, but red and orange, which does not su supply the energy for digestion. So even a person is eating well, drinking vitamins and so forth, the assimilation process are not well. So there are not only the uh, food elements that causes many conditions of CVD, but also the stress level, the stress exposure, the length of time they were exposed to stress and how high and what stage is the stress they were exposed to. Plus factors like smoking, which contribute a lot to uh, heart disease and hypertension. Uh, if, if that is not uh, regulated and the side effects of smoking is not curtailed or not reduced through healing methods or through proper detoxification methods, uh, the problem is as a person grows old and their bodies are becoming fragile, the other diseases like even heart conditions, uh, hypertension will take over. And at the time, a person is susceptible to stroke or to uh, thrombosis or other conditions, including kidney failure or heart failure. Now, the lack of exercise is also known as one of the causes of poor circulation and lack of oxygen saturation of the blood, and that causes maybe heart conditions and cardiovascular disease. So, if you just exercise once in a while, even one or two hours per week, instead of distributing 15 minutes per day, there is a tendency that you jar with traumatic uh, impact on a body who do not exercise a lot, who does not exercise a lot, and in two hours you over pump weights and you know carry heavy weights in the gym and without much breathing techniques accompanying that strenuous exercise, you can also subject yourself into like an over rupture uh, effects, especially if you have hypertension heart disease and you do a lot of heavy weights and, and abruptly once a week only, that would really give a traumatic uh, shock into your system. So exercise is good to me for CVD prevention. If it is uh, constant, consistent, and not too much high impact strenuous exercise. It's better to have less time to exercise but constantly every day than one or two hours high impact exercise once a week. So it is how you distribute the healthy habits and healthy uh, exercise habits so that you will have a good benefit rather than negative benefit. Also, if you do a lot of yoga and meditation and you do it only once a week and you, do, you overdo yoga breath, uh, what you call the stoppage of breath, apnea techniques, where you inhale deeply and hold and exhale, if you overdo that because nobody is telling you when to stop and how many minutes are safe for, uh, for that kind of uh, yogic breathing techniques, you can have a heart palpitation or heart condition if you overuse that technique called the apnea breath or uh, yogic breath without the consistency of having 
smaller dose of breath control but distributed in a week rather than one time high impact breath work and only once a week. So this smoothness, the transitionary phase from dormancy or latency or at the homeostasis level into a high energy level. These has to be avoided especially in people with predisposed cardiovascular diseases and heart conditions. Now, so doing yoga uh, might be dangerous if you overdo it and without consistency and without the gradual uh, scaling up of energy. There are breathing techniques like this holding of breath for a long time that's not good for cardiovascular diseases. It can raise your blood pressure or it can make your heart palpitate when you do a lot of those including using uh, hot sauna places, uh, the Bikram yoga, when you do a lot of this breathing technique in a hot environment, because they put you into a hot, steamy environment to do yoga. That can also be dangerous to people that have uh, very bad heart and uh, hypertension. And also using a lot of sauna and uh, hammams and uh, Turkish baths. If you have high blood pressure and heart conditions, Plus, you overexpose there without first exercising, releasing blockages of your heart, your emotions, your stress, before you get subjected to high energy. Uh, those can be dangerous to you as well. So what is good for a healthy person in yoga or martial arts or breathing techniques might not be good for a person who is fragile with heart conditions and hypertension. So you have to consult your medical physicians and your uh, doctors if you are going for a lot of these uh, practices. For meditation, yoga, and martial arts, I'm an expert on the hidden dangers of meditation and yoga and martial arts. So you can consult us and our senior coach and healers can give you some briefings and orientation on what are the safe practices that are allowed for certain kind of uh, disorders or diseases in terms of yoga, meditation, martial arts, and breathing science. So we have, I have studied extensively the side effects of meditation, yoga, martial arts, and breathing science to certain diseases, and even the ages where they're safe to practice yoga, meditation, or martial arts, and how to select your best instructor for your needs. So you need to consult the experts and those who know, because they have dirtied their hands, not only theoretically uh, learned, but they have healed so many people with conditions they have uh, mentored many clients and they know uh, uh, accurately the conditions that are <coughs> bad for, and contraindications for certain conditions of health. Of course, your medical doctor is the first person you consult. But if they are not yogic, uh, yoga practitioners or meditation experts and not experts in martial arts, they don't know what exercises are too strong for heart conditions, what breathing ratios of your breath when you do a ratio of right and left breathing or how many seconds breath, breath control are safe for different conditions. So these uh, kinds of data uh, we can supply in energy medicine and healing science. Also, uh, what kind of exercise are bad for uh, a heart disease and, and hypertension or people who had stroke? So we have many exercises that I've designed that are safe in general, but not safe. Some of them are not safe for everything. So we calibrated these exercises that would have uh, cautions and precautions for different conditions. So when you go for a gym or uh, work or you go for yoga or meditation work or martial arts practices, you need to tell your instructors or your trainers or your healers that these are my health conditions and please advise me what are the exercises that are not good for what I have. If they said, oh, no worry, these are all safe, then you have to start to question that person saying, are you sure? I heard from Master Dlape that there are exercises in yogic positions and uh, martial art techniques and exercise techniques that are not safe for uh, heart disease and hypertension or glaucoma or MS or any other disease that you might have along, alongside with heart disease or hypertension. So I repeat, uh, diets are very important. Of course, you need to drink substantial amount of water, especially alkaline water. 
because if you do a lot of exercise, you do not inhale enough oxygen and prana or chi because you are, have a shallow breath, plus you are highly stressed, plus you have a divorce being processed, and you have financial traumas from your divorce, plus you have problems with your employer, plus you are smoking. Now, well, a lot of things can be dangerous to you, including even some meditations which can abruptly surge the energy in you and it can be blocked where there's already a small blockage. You see? Like, if you see, if you see your blood vessels, it's like a highway of uh, the roads that you drive in. When you drive in a country road where there's no traffic, even big boulders of stones does not jam the traffic because there's not too many cars passing through. But in a super highway in your own city, even a small traffic uh, with a, s a few small stones in, in the highway would jam the traffic. So in you, the same. When you are relaxing and there's no energy flowing into your system, the blockages of your heart, coronary uh, blockages, your blood vessel blockages, might not harm you to create stroke. But when you're starting to pump energy through exercise, meditation, breathing, and gym work, and you get surprised with something, there's a surge of energy increased by your exercises and your breathing that even a small blockage can jam your system and create thrombosis and uh, stroke and aneurysm. So it's, it's the different factors combined that might contribute to the danger uh, of uh, cardiovascular diseases, especially uh, heart disease, hypertension, and the side effects of stroke and, and even eye failure and kidney failure, or eye diseases that comes with hypertension. All right, uh, since my, my talk today is focused on energy medicine, I would like to leave today a few techniques that you can use every day if you were uh, suffering from heart disease or hypertension or had already been afflicted with the side effects like kidney problems and eye problems. There are many exercises that I would like to share to you to help prevent, not just to correct, these problems and imbalances in your human energy system. One thing that I would like to share is how to rest well, how to align your emotions, your mind, and your soul so that you are always calm and inspired and aligned rather than always reactive. When you are very stressed and burnt out, you are very reactive and it can cause taxing, hammering effect on your heart and on your uh, blood vessels. So one way of avoiding and preventing a lot of these uh, uh, cardiovascular diseases, if you already have one or if you have a tendency to have one, or if you don't want to have these diseases, is resting well, staying calm, but high energy and resting well through sleep. There are techniques that I have designed as an expert in energy medicine and martial arts, yoga and meditation, which I have taught to many people with cardiovascular diseases or potential uh, stroke victims that had averted and have uh, defeated all these uh, diseases by using a few simple methods. Today, I'd like to share you some of them. One of them is called the synchronized breathing method. How to breathe uh, with more oxygen saturation in your blood and more injection of energy so that you will be able to flush your stress, your anxieties, your worries, your frustrations, your tension, and any emotional and mental blockages that you might have. And this is good to regulate also your sleep. And so when you do this before you sleep, even three or four sets of ten repetitions, you will go into a deep slumber so even four hours of deep sleep is more than your 10 hours of normal sleep. And so it gives you a lot of time to do many good things that you want instead of sleeping long because you are tired when you wake up and assuming that you are sleeping well. You are not going deep into your uh, slumber or your fourth stage of sleep, which gives you that restful uh, night's sleep. So this is called the synchronized breathing method. All right, I will demonstrate to you and those who know this one, just do it with me also. You chin in, exhale all the air. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. 
Inhale to the nose. Exhale to the mouth. Continue to do that for 10 sets or 10 repetitions and increase that to 15 as you grow into the process. Okay? So first 7 to 10 times first. This injection of rapid air will help convert the air to ions, negative ions, that ir irrigates your energy field with positive healing energy. It also allows you to flush negative thoughts and emotions that clogs your heart, your emotional centers, and your consciousness, which causes you to create a lot of uh, destructive uh, behaviors and many emotional blockages in your life. All right, let's do it. Start. Inhale to the nose. Exhale to the mouth. Continue. And then head straight. You concentrate on three points, the center of your chest, mid-brow, and top of the head. These centers stimulate the glands to balance your hormones, and it will stimulate also your consciousness to align. So you close your eyes and just follow my, ins my instructions. Concentrate on the center of your chest, mid-brow, and top of the head as you breathe slowly and deeply. As you breathe, relax and calm down. Again, 10 times. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale, nose, exhale mouth. One more. Head straight. Concentrate again on the center of your chest, mid-brow, top of the head, simultaneously. Close your eyes, breathe slowly and relax. Again, 10 times. Inhale and exhale. Head straight. Concentrate again on the three points. Center of the chest, mid-brow, top of the head, simultaneously. Breathe slowly. Relax.
again, 10 times, inhale up, exhale down, nose, mouth, Head straight, concentrate again in the center of the chest, mid brow on top of the head, and breathe slowly and deeply, rhythmically. Relax, calm down. Enjoy that inner peace and stillness as you breathe. Okay, open your eyes. How do you feel? Now, when you are mentally disturbed, confused, agitated, when you're emotionally anxious, depressive, having a lot of resentments and fear and worries, or you cannot sleep, these breathing techniques are a must-do. So it will help you calm your emotions and your mind, and you can enjoy peace of mind daily without having to try hard. If you, can ob if you observe yourself now, you feel kind of spacey or sleepy, right? Imagine doing these five sets of ten before you s go to bed. Just sit down beside your, you know, or in your bed, and do these five sets of ten. You will go sleep into a deep slumber called the fourth stage of sleep, and you will be able to go rest. And when you wake up, you feel fresh and robust and feel re revitalized even for hours of sleep. More than 10 hours of normal sleep without this technique of breathing. It will also help you uh, control anxiety, worries, fears, confusions, and agitations, and irritability. So it is really a good emotional uh, design to regulate and calm your emotions. When you have cardiovascular diseases or you tend to have all these symptoms. So it is a, a very important technique you can use every day for a lifetime or even a few times a week. If you are not that stressed, you can use this for higher techniques of meditation to get you out of body anytime you want without having to do a lot of preparation. So poor people who cannot afford vitamins, who cannot afford medical checkups every year, who cannot afford uh, healthy diets, if they will just do this, even smokers, they will start to make themselves healthier and it can prevent the side effects of a poor lineage uh, genetics and also it will help them regulate the side effects of diseases. It will also improve your defense system because embedded in your chest is called the thymus gland. It is the gland that regulates your, your immune system and your fighter cells, your macrophages and lymphocytes. When you concentrate here, you stimulate your soldiers to become stronger and, and they are ready to fight diseases. Aside from that, the heart center, which is a center of energy in your chest, also regulates your physical heart and your circulatory uh, system. So when you have a healthy heart, not only would you feel good and peaceful and emotionally healthy, you're also activating the center of energy that physically controls the heart. See, if there's a vitality in here, you do not get a lot of feeling of compression here when you are very stressed or having anxiety or panic attack. This will regulate many conditions of emotional disturbances that will prevent you from exacerbating or worsening your conditions, especially if you have a heart disease. Now, when you focus here, you're also increasing your mental power to focus. At the same time, it will stimulate your pineal or your pituitary gland, 
which is your master gland that regulates your hormones in the body. And when you focus on the top of the head, not only are you bringing inspiration brought by spiritual energy, which descends here. In Christianity, they call the descent of the Holy Spirit. Or in Buddhism, they call the heaven chi, or heaven ki, or heaven energy. You are bringing the pineal gland into activation to harmonize all the other glands. So this energy controls not only your intuition, your wisdom, intelligence, and your insightfulness in life to lead your life. It regulates the pineal gland and the descent of the divine light that brings you the healing energy and inspiration to live your life properly. So this technique called the synchronized breathing method is a very important technique to enhance your emotion, emotional intelligence, your mental sharpness, and your intuitional capability. So it will also make you, uh, equip you with better decision-making capabilities through using emotional intelligence, mental intelligence, and intuitional intelligence. So if you have less and less mistakes in life, you have less conflicts and crises, you have less emotional upheavals, you have less stress and anxiety and worries and fears or anger. Therefore, your emotional life will improve your heart, will improve your relationships. So when you say improve the environment for relationship building to prevent cardiovascular diseases, I hope WHO will get this technique that I just taught and adopt it as one of the preventative health measure, not only to heal heart conditions, but also to, heart, to heal conflicts, crises, and uh, broken-hearted people. It can make your heart grow, and you can have a bigger heart and an open heart as you use this technique. It will make you fight insomnia. It will make you fight uh, depression, anxiety, burnout, and sleep problems. So it is a very, very important uh, it's like an energetic multivitamin without taking physical vit vitamins. So it's one of those that can be deployed to use, uh, to be used by rich and poor alike. It's not just for the poor, but for the rich as well. Because the, the, say the, the defects of the circulatory system of the poor people may be attributed to too much uh, cholesterol from bad food, they use too much oil in cooking. They don't have the ghee to cook or special oils. So they use a lot of saturated oils that are commercial. And that can affect your, your cardiovascular health. Whereas the rich people might also have all the money to buy the most expensive oily foods. And they are more susceptible to emotional stress. Because, you know, as you grow your wealth, you need to protect your assets. And you, sometimes it leads to more anxiety and more apprehension and that can be an emotional cause of stress and that will also lead to heart abnormalities and conditions and hypertension. So many high blood pressure does not only select the poor but the rich. In fact, based on my uh, knowingness, I have a lot of clients from the rich families with hypertension and heart disease and for the poor people they have more maybe nutritional issues, uh, poverty, issues and, and maybe malnutrition and weakness because of uh, lack of uh, vitamins and diet uh, conditions. So, so there are a lot of uh, diseases that affect more the rich than the poor. Even though the low-income families are affected much by cardiovascular because they don't have money for early detection, medical uh, solutions, medical interventions, they don't have the budget to have heart surgery or even heart transplant. Therefore, there's more, um, I would say, mortality and uh, defects that uh, the poor people will have more than the rich. But e equally, the rich people are affected by this disease. Now, some of the things that I have observed in the energy medicine expertise lines of healing heart conditions and hypertension is that most people with heart conditions have weakness on the navel area. Now, there's an energy field which is rotating on your navel called the navel center. This is very important for uh, healing asthma, heart disease, and even depression and anxiety. People with heart disease, this is very depleted and erratic. So when I'm healing a, a person with heart condition, 
I normally energize a lot the navel because this is very weak and depleted. And this energy supplies vitality to the heart. So when the heart is depleted or even blocked, and the navel is blocked and depleted, there is a uh, worsening condition when the navel is weakened and the heart is weak. So we do heal the navel energy for heart conditions and even for different uh, cardiovascular uh, conditions. So when you have a, a weak navel, genetically you are predisposed to many uh, unhealthy uh, uh, issues, including people with asthma, they have very depleted navel. People with emphysema and MS and uh, autoimmune disorders, well, many people who are susceptible to infection is not just because of uh, your lungs or your tonsils or anything else. It is because the en energy here is weakened and this controls your flora in your guts. Your good bacteria depends on the energy on your navel. So even you eat well and you are you know, taking a lot of supplements, if your flora and your guts are not uh, strong and your good bacteria has been weakened because they say that if you take a lot of antibiotics, if you are so acidic and you have too much stress, it will hamper the functions of the good bacteria in your flora and your guts, intestines, which not only serve as a transformer and converter for nutrition from food, it is also one of the biggest aspects of your immune system aside from the lymphocytes and macrophages, your guts and the bacteria here will fight also diseases. So I would, I would suggest that by breathing through the navel alone, you're able to strengthen your flora energy and your good bacteria. You're also increasing your energy and vitality in your internal stamina that is housed here in the navel. That's why meditators and yogis, they always use the hand positions on their navel while breathing to accumulate power in your navel. In martial arts, we do a lot of breathing on the navel to make us more agile, powerful, and to have increased stamina and power. So this is a, a very good technique not only to empower your energy and stamina, it will improve your, your good bacteria and your flora and your guts. It will improve assimilation of nutrition and also it will give you instinctive intelligence called the gut instincts, which is stimulated to the navel. So it has many, many benefits when you can do this breathing while focusing on your navel. It gives you also that centering component of stress management because you are not emotional or mental when you are at an activation here. It's called you have a beingness or the ability to be silent, quiet internally and calm. So I'd like to teach you this technique, and I want you to form your left over right. Your left hand on top, okay? When you're looking at me, it's, this is your left hand. It's this side. So I want you to put your left on top of the right hand, form a circle, and put on your navel, and breathe slowly and rhythmically while focusing on your navel, okay? You might close your eyes, and we will do this technique of navel centering meditation to increase the navel energy, to support your heart, to increase the circulation of energy in your body, and to improve your digestive uh, efficiency and your assimilation of nutrition to your small intestines. All right, close your eyes, concentrate on your navel, and breathe slowly. And deeply and smoothly. Keep on focusing on your navel. Your mind is on your navel and breathing slowly and deeply. But relax and enjoy that inner peace and stillness as you're breathing. This is a meditation in itself.
Okay, open your eyes. That's around three or four minutes. By having four minutes of your time, concentrating your mind on your navel and breathing slowly, you'll improve not only your heart's health, not only your energy and vitality, not only your flora and gut's instincts. You will also improve your longevity potential. Why? Because people with a lot of energy in the navel, like yogis, gurus, masters in Asia, have a lot of energy potential because it conserves your energy from wasting what we call your post-birth chi or energy. When you are born, you have a predisposed number of substance that prolongs your life or if you consume them earlier than your lifespan, you will die earlier. Based on my research, which is put into my book, The Higher Science of Longevity book, I have researched the super centenarians and centenarians around the world who live more than 110 years old. The energy here is very active in them, even they are like more than 110 or 100 years old. So if you can maintain a high energy on your navel, not only do you have a healthy heart and a good blood pressure and a good digestive system and assimilation power for your nutrition, you have a tendency to have a postnatal jing or postnatal energy which prolongs your life not only to live a long physical life but a robust mental emotional activity because your health is always high with energy. And so it's a, an, a plus or a bonus of our lectures today with this technique alone. So make sure that you do left on top of the right. This is a very important concept. So this technique is called the navel breathing meditation and this is a centering meditation which I used and even Zen meditators use this hours and hours every week to experience what we call satori or illumination with an open eyes by being aware at this physical level, not at the soul level, which is uh, for the yogis and gurus to abstract, to be enlightened rather than to be physically present and enlightened. All right, now, for people who are also uh, looking for simple exercise to release your stress, to release your anxieties, to release your negative emotions and thought patterns, there are simple exercises which you can do to obliterate all the side effects because of the wear and tear of life, your long-term exposure to burnout or, or high, strains, high, high stage of stress, or you were susceptible to many uh, emotional conditions, or if you've been taking a lot of recreational drugs or alcohol and smoke and cigarettes, uh, this exercise will help you unblock your lungs, unblock your lymphatic system, unblock your thyroid so that you don't you do not gain weight easily and unblock your emotional energies and your heart and your lungs, especially if you have been smoking or still smoke today. So these exercises were designed by me as a combination of the best of martial arts biomechanical motion accompanied with the synchronous breath of uh, yoga. And it's, it's like a powerful tool because it brings the best of the Indian system, the, the Tibetan system, and the Japanese and Chinese system into one technique. So I'd like to demonstrate to you, and you might follow me and stand and clear a space so you can exercise freely. So this is called the eight step strategy, which I will not teach everything, but you can find this in my DVD. Uh, I will show you later on my DVD that will demonstrate all of this in 15 minutes. You finish all the breathing techniques the exercises and the centering meditation. It's called Just Be Alive. I will show you later on that DVD, which you can secure from our website or buy from your local organizer who invited you. Okay, first thing that you can release a lot of anxiety is through breath and flicking out. It's like this. If you have a lot of anxiety, you feel palpitation, you feel tightening in your solar plexus, very tight neck, and tight jaw, and your heart rate is increased, you are on high stage of, stage of stress or burnout, and you're starting to stiffen and harden on your shoulder, plus as if you are blocked on your arms and hands. So you need to just flush it out like this. Inhale up, deep breath, exhale down. You can exhale, expel also. 
the negative feelings you might have or stress or tension, especially from your shoulder. Ready? Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. By just doing that alone, a lot of anxiety, tension in your shoulders, tightening in your jaw, or palpitation in your heart, and hardening of your stomach, you tend to bring it out through your breath by bimical flushing or hand flicks. If you have arthritis, if you have poor circulation on the arms, you can also use that to circulate more energy and increase your oxygen saturation of your blood. Okay, so that's one. Second, you do leg flush. If you cannot banish yourself, just hold on the chair and just flick your legs or flush your legs. You inhale, bring it up, kick out, and alternate. Inhale the left, with the, inhale, rising the left, click, uh, kick, alternate. Inhale, kick, but you have to kick out to flush the blockage in your legs and also your uh, lower portion, including people with blood pressure. This is a good thing to flush and unblock your, your calf and your legs to balance your blood pressure back. It's very good if you have uh, liquid retention, if you have back pain, you have a lot of uh, menstrual cramps or perimenopausal hot flushes, and you are growing sideways. This is a good thing to do every day to unblock your legs and circulate more energy into your system. So again, inhale, raise your leg, kick. Alternate. Continue. Okay. How do you feel? They feel more unblocking your arms, your shoulders, and your legs. Now, the arms and legs are like exit points and entry points or ventilators of your body, especially your spine highway, if you were a highway. These are exit points like roads. So when these are blocked, including your legs, the whole uh, body is uh, congested and blocked and not circulating because the exit points are jammed. There is a lot of energy that passes in and out through your hands. There's an energy center in your palm called the hand chakra which healers use to project energy or receive energy. When people bless you, they do this, even the priests, the guru. You can see a lot of saints doing these, mudras. So these energies exiting through the hands can give energy to a patient when you heal them, or you can absorb energy through them, or you can release toxins and congestions of stress in your shoulder, your arms, by flicking them out. Likewise, your legs are like ventilators of energy and entry uh, points of energy. So when you unblock your arms and legs, there's a, an increase of circulation of energy in your body, and it unblocks your system and the different organs. So it's important. Hand flicks with deep breath, leg flushes with deep breath. Third exercise that you need to learn is how to release your stress and tension in your shoulders, in your stomach, your lower back, and in your whole system, when you are very stressed and burned out, you feel heavy, you feel very dense and tense on your shoulder, and then you tend to be drooped, and if, when you worry, you tend to droop your shoulders, and you become a warrior's chest. And then your breathing starts to be erratic and shallow. Therefore, you affect the volume of oxygen saturation in your blood, and thus you cannot expel more toxins they say the blood becomes thicker and more toxic, so it causes many blood pressure issues and heart conditions. So these uh, exercises, including this one, the third one, is so important, and I will demonstrate to you. It's like this. You brace yourself, open your legs, put your hands in front, and you inhale and look at the ceiling. Stretch, exhale out. Inhale, inhale as deep as you can. Exhale, stress. Chin in, chin up, chin in. And push out negative energies, your frustrations, your anger, 
your stress, anything negative in your emotions, your mind, your energy, <sighs> puff it out and flush it out with intent. Okay, ready? Inhale up, exhale down, chin up, chin in, chin up, chin in, chin up, chin in, chin up, chin in, chin up, chin in. Good. These exercises will also improve your circulation of energy in your body, plus those who want to maintain their weight. This is so important. The thyroid glands are responsible for me metabolism, aside from other functions. So when you open and close your neck and you decompress, you stimulate the energy centers which control them, left and right thyroid centers, and thus unblocking them to make your thyroid function. Again, either you have hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism, this can help. Also, you will drain your lymphatic system to be able to drain the toxins in between your cells and in the lymph nodes, especially if you have the tendency to have cysts and tumors and blockages of your lymphatic system and you start to have inflammation. It is better to do this because you will unblock them and drain them properly. All right. Another thing that you need to do is to uh, hold your hips like this. It's called the hip rolls. It will unblock things that does not allow to flow properly, which blocks the emotional energy and the heart energy and the energy on your navel. So your hip rolls, hold your hips, inhale, rotate to the right, inhale, exhale to the left, inhale to the right. Continue breathing. And opposite, inhale to the left, to the opposite side for you. Another one to the right. Opposite. Now, this exercise is so important, not only for hypertension, because it unblocks the energy at the back of your navel your adrenals, your kidneys, your lower back. It also allows the circulation of energy in your gonads and your reproductive system to prevent the hot flushes for perimenopause, the PMS and menstruation cramps for women when they are in the periods. And also it unblocks the prostate for men who have prob problems with prostate. And people with a lot of uh, hyperactivity and ADD type of issues, impulsivity, this will unblock many energies that makes you move without control. So it's good for ADD children, ADHD children, and also people who are fixated mentally. This will make the energy flow that makes your mind creative, and it will circulate more energy into your head, especially for people with Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and senile decay and forgetfulness. This technique is so important. People also with constipation, it will improve the circulation in your guts and your intestines. Now, one of the last exercises that I would like to teach you today, because this is not a complete seminar, it is an introduction to many of the things we can teach you. In fact, don't worry, uh, this DVD, Just Be Alive, is just 15 minute workout, simple. You do not get tired, but you increase your energy tremendously. It really works for people, not only with cardiovascular diseases, but people with depression, anxiety, burnout, and sleep problems. But this is a very good corrective and preventative tool for people with hypertension, heart disease, and people who are still recovering from stroke, and people with many emotional and mental blockages. So I recommend you this. It's only 15 minutes, and it will work it out to prevent and correct certain diseases that you might have. All right, even if you are healthy, 
I recommend this. I use it every day. It's only 15 minutes uh, ritual. Now, one of the last exercises is called the expanding squats. This is to circulate energy and oxygen and blood without the traumatic uh, jarring of tr strenuous uh, workout and circuit exercises. So let's do it. Inhale, exhale down. Now, if you have a heart condition, then you do it so slow, even when you have asthma or emphysema, you need to do it so slow so that you do not feel fainting or overloaded with oxygen saturation. Do it so slow that you do not get that dizziness. Okay? So we will do it the slow way. Inhale. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exaggerate your breathing. Okay, you do 10 of that. Now, if you have emphysema or asthma, you need to be very careful that you do not make yourself faint because you are not used to high oxygen saturation and you can faint or you can drown with oxygen also. So you consult your doctors and your healthcare uh, advisors for these exercises as well. But if you have lack of willpower, you do this very fast. <laughs> Every day, 30 times a day, morning and afternoon, this, especially people with depression, anxiety, and devitalization, this will increase your power immediately in a few days. People who cannot focus, ADDs, learning disorders, people who are forgetful, including Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, they can do this every day, a few times a day, and they will start to get revitalized and refocused. All right, so I repeat the exercise is the hand flicks, around seven to ten of them, and the leg flush, legs, alternate, then the shoulder and spine stress release, do around ten or seven first, and build up to ten or fifteen, then you do the hip rolls, to the right first, Opposite me, around 10 and reverse, around 10, then 10. And then a slower uh, expanding squats to increase your oxygen circulation and your air circulation and hydraulic effect on your blood and your energy. So do it slowly first. As you get stronger, you do it faster and faster until you do 30 of them easily. I want you to remember that if you are in doubt of whether this is healthy for you, you consult your medical advisors and doctors for your opinions to be able to do this safely. Otherwise, if you can do this without any side effects, then uh, I have used this to many people, for many people who had heart diseases, hypertension, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and many other afflictions which brings them immediately energy, circulation of oxygen, such an increasing saturation of oxygen, and also revitalization. All right. Before we end our session today, I would like to lead you a simple healing meditation which can really release some of your emotional blockages, your traumas, your heart breaking experiences and memories which can cause bitterness, resentments, uh, anger, even rage that can really affect your heart and your cardiovascular health. So I wish that WHO will make eventually these techniques as part of their recommendations not only to correct cardiovascular disease but to prevent uh, people from, not, from suffering from CVD or the cardiovascular disorders. All right. This meditation is on a CD called Just Be Free. So if you cannot memorize everything I, I will guide you with, you can just procure this Just Be Free CD. It's a 19 minutes meditation that can heal your past 
present and energize your future. Now, we have free sessions that will be offered through, through our MDP TV and through broadcast. You can, you can log on into our uh, website. We will be offering a few of these sessions after this lecture so that you can uh, organize your own families to listen, your friends, or your colleagues, or your group, so that you can listen to our uh, offerings uh, free of charge for a few sessions. And if you want to order it so you can carry the CD and play it anywhere you want, anytime, then without depending on our downloads, then you can benefit you and your friends. And it's probably a good gift to give to your friends who have uh, tendencies to, uh, with heart diseases and hypertension. And you, to prevent yourself from getting sick, not only for CVDs, but for other diseases as well. Anyway... Uh, I'd like to lead you uh, with a few minutes of this self-healing meditation called Just Be Free, a short version, so we can finish this in a few minutes, and I will be able to heal you and give you some benefits of uh, inner renewal and transformation before we finish the lecture today. All right, I'd like to, you to close your eyes, and I will guide you step by step. This is so easy, but it is Renew, renewing your emotional health and mental health and energetic health. Inhale ex and exhale slowly and relax. I want you to visualize yourself in front of a beautiful ocean. Inhaling, exhaling slowly. When you exhale your air, Breathe out slowly your anxieties, your worries, your stress, and your tension in your lives. Exhale. Anxieties, worries, stress, tension. Out to the ocean, as if the ocean is absorbing and extracting all of these negative feelings and energies. Exhale also with intentions, your anger, frustrations, irritability, or any, any pent-up emotions. Release them out and let go. Let the ocean absorb the energy. Exhale also your traumas in life, your painful memories and experiences, the side effects as well. Release them out and include even things that came from your childhood, your younger years, your adulthood, all these bad memories and pains, sufferings, struggle and traumas. Release them out to the ocean and let go. Exhale all your sadness, loneliness, feeling of depression, or any weakening emotions, including guilt. These are all bad for your emotional health and your heart. Release them out and let the ocean absorb them as you breathe out. Exhale all confusions, doubts, 
uncertainties, all negative thought patterns, including doubts, confusion, uncertainties of your mind and your life. Exhale them out to the ocean as you breathe. Imagine the ocean absorbing all of them. Exhale all diseases, toxins, all negative feelings, thoughts, diseases, unresolved issues in your life, problems in your life, source of trouble and worries. Exhale them out, all these energies out as you breathe out to the ocean. Release anything that is unresolved in your life, unresolved issues, pending issues. Excel them out. Release all of these negativity and command them to be gone forever, not to come back. They're gone forever. Disconnect from them. As if there's a sword cutting the cord between you and those negativities. Now. Now I want you to awaken your heart, to feel good, to open up your heart, your emotional heart. Breathe slowly while concentrating gently on the center of your chest. The area where you feel love and positive emotions. Breathe slowly while concentrating on the center of your chest, on your heart center. As you breathe, you recall happy events of your life. Recall and re-experience happy moments, successful moments in your life, as if you're feeling them in your heart, those pleasant memories now. and share these nice feelings to your loved ones and families, especially people who had helped your life. There are a few people who had really helped you. Visualize them in front of you and express your love, gratitude and respect to them as if you're talking to them from the heart. Be sincere and humble to express it as if this were your last time to do so. And share that nice feelings also to your friends, colleagues, and use your heart feelings to express it as if this were your last time to do so.
I want you to visualize also people who had been hurt by you. And you just apologize as if they are in front, as if they were in front of you. Apologize and ask for forgiveness and see yourself being forgiven. Release the guilt, the regrets which can tax your heart and your emotional health. And visualize also people who had hurt your life or are still hurting you. You talk to them and express your heart and your emotions. Advise them to become better people without blame or anger. Try your best. Do your best to talk to them without blame or anger. As if you're talking to them now. And then do your best to forgive them, even mechanically at first, until you forgive unconditionally. Just express your heartfelt forgiveness to all. Knowing that when you forgive, you shall be forgiven as well. When you show mercy to others, the good karma is you will receive mercy and compassion when you need it for your life. What you plant and sow is what you harvest. You plan forgiveness, you shall also be forgiven. Let all be forgiven, let all be free. Let all be forgiven, let all be free. Forgive them and let go of that karma or their negative connections. As if you're disconnecting from those negativity. And let all be forgiven, let all be free. So it is. Now you also forgive yourself, accept yourself. Do not sabotage yourself by taking toxins, toxic substances, because you have to blame yourself for something. So forgive yourself and accept yourself. And say something nice about your life and about yourself. Three good things about you. And accept it and praise yourself. Let all be forgiven, let all be free. So with you. So it is. So it is. Open your eyes. I hope you feel better and feel a sense of re rejuvenation and renewal and re reinvigoration. Now, I have added a small component, but a big effect in your life. Emotional health. The health of your heart depends also how many people were hurt by you and how many people are still hurting you. The more friends you have and the less enemies, the better your health quotients and your health uh, improvement. People who have not forgiven others uh, will still have heart conditions because bitterness, resentments do not just affect your emotional centers which affects your pancreas or cause diabetic uh, tendencies. You can also affect the, healthy, the health of your heart and also your blood pressure. So having to release all the karma of connections from negative relationships, from past relationships, from your own hurts that you inflicted on others, then you are more free with your heart to live a happier life, which brings you better health. And don't forget to laugh and smile, because uh, as they say, laughter... Is the best medicine. When you laugh, all these accumulations of pent-up emotions, uh, bitterness, resentments, and negative uh, uh, emotional uh, co uh, conditions tend to release when you laugh. So do not l forget to laugh aside from have, having a good food and diet, minimizing oily foods uh, and many toxic substances in your food. 
Thirdly is to be able to breathe every day to increase your oxygen saturation and circulation of oxygenated blood and energy in your system. Do not always sit down in a sedentary watching television and not exercise. When you use a lot of computers, exercise and circulate every few hours of uh, sitting down. When you ride planes and are a frequent flyer uh, traveler like me, uh, please exercise af after a few hours of sitting and go to the restroom, walk, stretch, and kick your legs, flick your hands so that you do not jam your en energy centers in your heart and emotional centers, thus causing many uh, car cardiovascular conditions. And uh, people who are having digestive problems, acid reflux, heartburns, you, you consult your doctor if you can take probiotics, prebiotic diets and, and other uh, measures to improve your, your digestive system. And don't forget to exercise, even not heavy exercises, but regular and consistent and rhythmic. Rather than one big bang and then you finish a big strenuous exercise once a week. You'd rather be walking, stationary jogging, stretching, doing your yoga or meditations regularly than once a week in a big scale. And don't forget to forgive other people. If you have heartaches, it can break your heart and physically it can impair your heart conditions. And if you have a lot of people who have been hurt by you and you have not been forgiven, please do so. Reconcile, even mentally and emotionally, when you meditate, you ask for forgiveness and express yourself that you are sorry and apologetic and that releases a lot of your emotional burden and guilt, which causes your emotional health issues. That's why you say mea culpa, mea culpa, or my guilt, you beat your heart. Because really your heart centers, and your heart center is the one controlling your physical heart and your thymus gland. So the breathing I taught you will activate your immune system and your emotional heart, your pituitary and your mental health, and your spiritual health and your intuition and your pineal gland. Many benefits are achieved by using the techniques I've taught you today, including the navel breathing and centering meditation, which gives you centering and calmness and not predisposed to a lot of stimulation of emotional impulses and uh, people's uh, reaction to you. So you do not react all the time, but be calm, be centered, and be cool. Of course, food is so important, so consult your, your nutritionist, what suits you, and also there are different kinds of human beings there are eight types of human designs. So different, what is good for others might not be good for you. Or your tolerance against the work load of others might not be suited for you because you have a very low stress and fatigue tolerance while others have more will. Therefore, increasing your willpower, balancing with a good heart and intelligent mind is a good balancing uh, equation for you to have a more evolved being to be able to make better decisions and to keep yourself with all the highest quotients for your health. So your total health quotients physically is high, energetically is high, emotionally is high, and mentally and spiritually are also high. So these are all taught by us, and uh, you can learn how to heal yourself and others by enrolling in our energy medicine, be well science, different levels of uh, skills. So you can enroll in the first level, which requires you a day of training, and then you can learn all kinds of exercises, meditation, breathing techniques, and healing techniques that you can heal yourself, your families, your loved ones, or other people around you. And I would like to announce also, uh, or, or, or you can consult our website. You can find a lot of our freebies there. You can join our uh, meditation groups, our free downloads of our lectures for longevity science, for healthy diabetic, for healthy smokers. There are many... Uh, free things you can find from our website, so visit. Of course, we have many books you can study, including The Hidden Dangers of Meditation and Yoga, which is important. Many millions of people today who are meditating and doing yoga and martial arts are endangering their families who are meditating with them or themselves or their students by not knowing the at least 25 hidden dangers of meditation and yoga. This is a book, and you can purchase it easily. Now, the... Uh, Earth uh, Day is a position in April 22. We will celebrate the Earth Day with a lecture 
by me again on how to collaborate with the earth intelligence, the new earth and the new humanity that will uh, give us the avenue to channel uh, new information, not just do what we want to the earth by just cleaning our backyards and by just avoiding recycles, uh, avoiding uh, junk uh, things to spread everywhere, but really to tune in to the divine plan which governs the earth and all the kingdoms. There are seven kingdoms that are inside the earth, not only the mineral kingdom, not only the plant kingdom, not only the human kingdom and the advanced human kingdoms and the saint kingdoms, angelic beings and, and angels uh, are also kingdoms. So how do you collaborate and how do you understand the divine plan by knowing the integral use of uh, knowledge and wisdom behind the earth's uh, divine plan and the earth's evolution as a living organism, as a living being, as a living planet? It's more than just the physical soil that we see and the physical countries we live in. It is an, a world within worlds. So uh, uh, invite people, invite your friends. Earth Day will be April 22. My lecture will start at 7 and, and ends at 8.30 p.m. Texas time. So join us so that we can enrich you with the new humanity and the new earth. How do we collaborate with the divine plan and the divine purpose of the planet with all the nine kingdoms or even more? But I will spell, I will spell out only what is allowed to be included in our lecture. Now, the MDP Foundation is our nonprofit and tax exam corporation that collaborates with many uh, organizations in the world today to help serve humanity in the world and to collaborate in terms of health and well being, spiritualization and education of humanity to advance to an enlightened stage, to globalize philosophy, religions, and uh, culture so that we have a universal approach to life that is more enlightened, that is not sectarian, not combative, not elitist, but not also uh, ignorant. So we will work on fighting ignorance, misinformation, and highly educate and enlighten humanity to be able to live their greatest life and also to be able to enjoy life, not only suffer through life. Do not forget that we have also the HIV research program, HARP. Anybody with HIV or AIDS, we welcome them, even your friends, associates, or acquaintances, because we have designed an energy medicine to be able to help any stage of HIV and AIDS and help them gain back their immune system and fight back the disease that comes with a weakened immune system. It's called HARP. Also, you can donate uh, money to help a lot of our clients who do not have money, that we are employing many healers and trainers to educate the underserved and people who are afflicted in many countries, including the third world countries. And we need to help empower the youth. We have projects that empower the youth and uh, educate them how to make better decisions, how to solve problems, how to combine the skills in the class and also the street, uh, street smart skills that they need for their lives to be better and better, and how to make them leaders and how to improve their, uh, their consciousness. We have what we call the World Talent Bank and World Wisdom Bank. It's an, an, a group uh, of work that I designed to invite talents and wisdom to be deposited to be able to serve the underprivileged and the, the charity uh, projects that we have in other organizations. So we need talents, we need to embank our wisdom from all the experiences in life and serve in whatever capacity we have. Or if you're a fundraiser, we have many projects that will help the third world countries in diabetes, uh, component HIV, including uh, children who are having a problem to keep them out of troubles. And of course, the Earth Day will give you our whole Earth Care Project, our plans to help the earth and all its constitution, not only human beings but animals, the plants and the invisible world, to be able to live as a complete ecosystem of the nine kingdoms. So as I said earlier, one out of three adults are affected with cardiovascular diseases. So do not be one do not be the one out of three. Be the two out of three who are not sick with cardiovascular diseases. And do not join that eighteen million people who die annually which is 30% of the deaths globally caused by diseases because of cardiovascular disease or CVD.
CVD. So be healthy in all levels, not only physically, but mentally and spiritually. Join the ranks of our service if you want to be able to help people uh, in, in whatever capacity you might have. All right, good luck to everyone, and I hope to see you again in our future uh, talks. And join our meditations and, uh, and lectures through the Internet. Every month we have lectures. And so download free lectures from www.mdpfglobal.org. Have a nice uh, WH day fighting cardiovascular diseases. Most likely, you have a better survival uh, instincts and uh, factors than somebody who doesn't have a genetic predisposition for heart disease, but, but is highly stressed, smoke, drink, and do not observe a good diet. So it depends on what combinations are mixed to make things worse, or what makes uh, things um, predispose you to different conditions like heart disease. For example, many emotional people are easier to have maybe heart conditions and diabetes than people who are more mental in the sense that when you are emotional and you get easily frustrated and you are very intolerant to things, you have a very stre a low stress and fatigue tolerance. And we have a emotional problems. When you have a fight, you easily get hurt than a person who is more mental and more powerful. So there is a factor that is brought by the balance of your trinity. In you are is the likeness and image of God or the Creator because we copied the Trinity qualities of God or the divine uh, being. We have the capacity to be powerful, vitality. We have love and emotions and feelings and we have the mind and thoughts. So if you see who what makes you similar to God, is, are, these are the three components. Power, including vitality, your love and emotions and feelings and your mind and your thought patterns. Now, a lot of people who are very emotional tends to get stress easier. As you increase your emotional sensitivity, you can also empathize to many people's problems. Without suffering yourself, you can suffer emotionally by empathizing with people with uh, problems around you, especially related to you like family members. Whereas, Mental people have uh, the ability to compartment Hello everyone, I am Master Delpe. I am talking in behalf of the MDP Foundation and Be Life, uh, my organization that supports not only our local communities in Houston and in Texas, but global clients who are not just suffering from diseases but also life aff afflictions like poverty and laziness and other kinds of internal problems. Today commemorates the 65 years anniversary of the WHO, World Health uh, Organization. And it is April 7, in 1948, that WHO was established. So I'd like to congratulate WHO and its team uh, worldwide for doing a great job in fighting uh, diseases and other human afflictions. Now the theme of uh, today, April 7, uh, lecture in conjunction with the WHO day, will be a high blood pressure and cardiovascular diseases. And uh, the theme of WHO really to, uh, to uh, commemorate this, uh, this uh, day is to reduce heart stroke and heart attacks in humanity and also to uh, bring greater awareness to humanity, improve the detection of uh, cardiovascular diseases, and also to enable the ecosystem and the environment to support these processes. So we will collaborate with the WHO in this process, but we will be talking largely in the level of energy medicine and healing science as a support to this uh, goal of WHO. Now, do you know that one out of three adults have uh, hypertension? Now, that's a lot. If you are 
10 people, at least three people, even the potential uh, victims of stroke, we are able to prevent the occurrence of these uh, uh, predicaments and afflictions before they hammer or the, before they affect the human being. So it is a very good tool to be used not only to correct people who are already paralyzed, already have uh, heart conditions, but to prevent them from not having them, especially if they have genetic uh, potential to have these diseases. So this energy field around a person called the human aura, and the centers of energy that are protruding like trumpets of light in front of your body and at the back, and even in your palms and elbows, armpits. And these centers of energy are our concern in energy medicine plus cleaning and balancing the human aura so that they do not get clogged or they do not get stale or they do not get congested in certain parts of the body that can cause hypertension, heart disease, or even paralysis. So this human energy field called the human aura or bioplasmic energy body is much easy to regulate and balance if you know their energy anatomy and you know what energy controls what organ. For example, many heart conditions are not just caused by a high cholesterol diet, oily diet, or only uh, because of genetics. Even people with no genetic predisposition can have heart conditions and hypertension if they violate certain energetic principles. For example, if you smoke, if you drink heavily, plus you are highly stressed, plus you do not sleep well, plus you have a divorce, or if you have a high stress uh, cause of conflict, you will be susceptible easily to heart condition, blood pressure, or other side effects. But if you smoke, or when you smoke, and you still exercise, and you eat well, and you are not that stressed, regulated and not controlled, they're endangering a person to be incapacitated for life sometimes, especially with a stroke and paralysis. Now, the energy medicine component of my lecture today focuses on things they do not talk much at the scientific level or even at the professional medical levels. So I can bring my expertise as a, as a world expert in energy medicine and healing science to all of you who are listening today, to your loved ones who might have potential stroke and heart attack because they have CVDs already, or even our children and our future youth who can be educated with the right skills and the right behaviors to be able to fight and prevent this disease or these diseases of CVD. Now, first of all, I'd like to talk about the energetic components of uh, diseases. Before a person gets sick, there is already an energetic disease energy either in the heart, in the throat, in the eyes, or even in the back, in this L4, L5 areas where the energy that controls blood pressure is located. So we do a lot of uh, maintenance and or preventive techniques to balance this energy field of a human being, the invisible energy field, which is called the human aura. And there are centers of energy called the chakras that controls the different glands inside our bodies. It can also control your blood pressure. It can uh, control your brain, your nervous system. All of these energy centers called the chakras or centers of energy are very crucial in regulating blood pressure, heartbeat, including prevention of uh, heart attacks and stroke and hypertension. So by evaluating the patterns of diseases like hypertension or high blood, heart conditions, and people would have hypertension. And that's alarming to me because, uh, you know, uh, there are people who are endangering today their lives and their health because they have high blood pressure. And high blood pressure, when it is not regulated, can lead to stroke or aneurysms, which can paralyze people and re render them use, uh, not as useful as before. Cardiovascular diseases, the CVD, are the number one cause of death globally. According to WHO statistics, 18 million people die of CVD or cardiovascular disease 
uh, every year. And that is 30% of all global deaths caused by diseases. 18 million people die every year. That's a lot of people who die of uh, cardiovascular diseases. 30% of uh, the whole global deaths are caused by CVDs. So it's alarming. And usually low-income uh, low uh, countries, the third world countries, are subjected to this, uh, uh, to this predicament. And 80% of these deaths are from these low-income families. So WHO has to focus more on people who are underserved. And so our nonprofit uh, organization, MDP Foundation, focuses on the underserved and underprivileged groups around the world to serve them, not only to feed them with physical food, but to feed them with consciousness, we educate them with new tools and life skills so that they can fight diseases, rather than paying more expensive uh, pills and medical intervention like heart surgery or for paralysis issues and rehabilitation, which are expensive. We'd rather have them uh, tools to prevent CVDs. Now, hypertension or high blood increases the risk of heart attacks, stroke, and even kidney failure. So when they are not ready,